So, I am back uh, to do my next UFC prediction. This is a fight night that is taking place on the 27th of this month. The uh, main event is interesting. It is uh, Demian Mayer and Carlos Condit. Now, these are ranked 4th and 5th uh, respectively. They've both got uh, extremely good records. We've got 23 and 6 for Damien and 30 and 8 uh, for Condit. Now, uh, the issue with this is that um, it's a difficult one. They're both reasonably well rounded in terms of the way they win, statistically speaking. On paper, it looks like striker versus groundsman. Um, Demian Mayer is a whiz on the ground, so it's not surprising that that's where his area of expertise sort of lies. Uh, whereas um, Carlos Condit is very good on the feet. The thing that's going to be the deciding point here is actually the decision. Because Demian Mayer is also quite a decision king. Okay, 39%. Uh, of his victories are by decision, whereas Carlos Condit uh, only 7%. He, he has sometimes been taken to decision and lost. Uh, so when we're talking about on their feet, the thing that Carlos Condit has to do to win this bout is uh, get a stoppage somehow really. Uh, and that's interesting because um, Damien Mayer's uh, record is very void of that. Um, you know, 13% it, it, it says here, but those are all uh, from a very, very long time ago. A very long time ago. As I have to admit, um, are m a lot of his submissions, he is at the moment a bit of a decision king. Uh, so, the other thing is that Carlos Condit is not bad at finishing on the ground. 43% for him, 48% uh, for Damien Mayer, but that is not to say that Carlos Condit is anything like Damien Mayer on the ground. Um, his area of expertise really is stand-up, um, and I just don't see uh, him managing to get a submission victory. So here's, here's the thing, I suppose the onus lies with him, uh, if it goes all the way to decision, Demian Mayer will probably win, and he'll be dominating on the ground. Doubt he'll get a finish, but there we are. Carlos Condit, on the other hand, has to get a finish, I think, really to win. Personally, I'd like to see Carlos Condit win this, but I think the uh, safe bet is to go with Demian Mayer there. Uh, Anthony Pettis is fighting Charles Oliveira. Um, I think that Anthony Pettis should win this one. Uh, interestingly, this again is stand-up versus groundsman, uh, and it's Charles that is on the ground for that. Neither of them have a very high percentage of wins by decision, so this one is probably going to be a finish. Um, Charles' record is slightly better, 21-5 to 18-5 for Anthony Pettis. However, the level of calibre that Anthony has faced over his time is so much higher that I hope that that manages to cancel that out. There is a women's bout on the card. Uh, and then we go to Joe Lozon versus Jim Miller. Now, these people are doing quick turnarounds because both of them were on um, a card very, very recently. Uh, they were fighting different opponents, they both won, and now they are fighting each other. So there we are. Um, the other thing, the other interesting thing is that this is going to be a ground war, statistically, because Jim Miller is excellent on the ground, and Joe Lozon gets a lot of ground finishes. Statistically, here, it has Joe higher, 65% to 54, but Jim Miller is more of a, um, I suppose, a complete groundsman, if that makes sense. So the amount of finishes he actually gets obscures the fact that he may be better on the ground, holistically speaking. Um, the other thing to remember is that Jim Miller 
uh, a little bit like Damien Mayer in this respect, uh, has a lot of wins by decision. It tends to be he either wins by submission or spends a lot of time on the ground and dominates there so that he gets the decision. Joe Lozon virtually never wins by decision at all uh, and he's not huge on the feet either. So the test here is can Joe Lozon actually get a finish on the ground against Jim Miller? When you put it like that, I think not. Again, this is one where I would love to see Joe win, but I think the safe bet is probably to go with Jim Miller on that one. The mid card, we've got Sam Alvey and Kevin Casey. Uh, don't know, although Sam Alvey has a much better record. 27 and 8 here. Uh, Kevin Casey, 9 and 4. I feel like I've heard of him more. Uh, they're both strikers. Um, I think I'll go for Kevin Casey on that. Chad Laprise and Tybalt Guti. Don't know much about him. Uh, both have records of 11 and 2. Uh, classic uh, striker versus groundsman here with Chad on the feet. Um, I shall go for him winning. Uh, and if not, he will probably get a decision victory. Uh, Enrique Barzola, not to be uh, confused with Barboza, uh, and Kyle Bochniak. I don't think I know either of these, to be fair. Enrique doesn't have any statistics either, whereas Kyle Bochniak uh, is 33% on the ground, 33% uh, on the feet, and 33% submission. So, uh, sorry, a decision. So, the ultimate in being well-rounded there, I suppose. Uh, the next one, Shane Campbell and Felipe Silva. Uh, Silva has a perfect record of seven here. Uh, I am guessing, by the fact that he has 71% of those statistically on the feet, uh, that that is really where his, his wins have come from. 12 and 5 for Shane Campbell, who is equal in terms of being on the feet or on the ground, sorry, or, or by decision. So this is not really going to be a war on the ground at all, it's on the feet. And if it goes to uh, decision, Shane Campbell will probably win. Don't know a lot about Shane Campbell, 12 and 5 is his record. Uh, I'd like to think that in the UFC perfect records are not something that hangs around for a long time unless you are something e exceptional uh, or a poster boy. That's being pushed to the, to the limit. Um, so I'll probably go for Shane Campbell on that, but that could be doing uh, Silva a, a disservice, really. Uh, Josh Emmett and Jeremy Kennedy, don't know. Again, two guys here, both having perfect records. We've got perfect 10 uh, versus perfect 8. And they're both extremely well-rounded. Um, I don't know who will win that one. I don't know either of them, I don't think. Uh, Gareth McKellen and Alessio Di Chirico, I don't know that one either, don't know that one either, although that one has the possibility of being a ground game if Alessio uh, is prepared to do that. He's actually 44% ground and striking, whereas uh, Gareth is 69% sort of completely, has never had a decision victory either, um, but I don't really know. Uh, Ning Gang Yu and Marlon Vera, no idea. Uh, no idea at all there. Except the one is, this is really sort of like polarised here because Marlon Vera is 71% on the ground. Uh, Ning is 67% stand up, so you can easily see where their sort of focus is. Um, but their records are very similar 7 3 and 6 3, so. And right at the bottom of the card, Ryan James and Adam Hunter, neither of which have photos, neither of which I think I've heard of. 8 and 1 versus 7 and 1. Uh, and again, it's, it's very polarised. 88% for Ryan on the ground, 86% for Adam on the feet, uh, and virtually nothing for any of the other car ca uh, um, categories. So, there we are. You have to know the guy to know if they're going to be good or not. Uh, enough to win and I don't so there we are that those are my predictions for the next for the next event